Hey gang, Scott here. We are almost finished with the set of filters in On One Effects. We're at the vignette filter, and this one gets used on a lot of my photos. I like the way that On One has implemented their vignette. Lots of control, very easy to work visually. I'll show you how I use the vignette tool in this video and uh, the sliders that go with it. Uh, really quick, if you are thinking about adding On One products to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there. Save you some money, gives me a little support so I can do more videos like this. So let's have a look at vignette. I mean, vignette, you know, classic tool here. We'll get this added into our filter stack right there and a handful of sliders, right? We can control the brightness of the vignette. So how dark or how bright, if you want to go back to like, you know, 1985 for your, uh, your wedding photos kind of thing there. But you know, generally I'm doing darkness, the size, right? How feathered this is. And then how round the shape is. If we put that feather down, you can see that shape, right? Like that. You can make it rounder. You can make it more, uh, you know, kind of a letterbox type of thing. Uh, and there are some different modes. We have different ways of blending that vignette with the scene. And that's kind of up to you how you want to work with it. Uh, I tend to just stick with normal. Fit to canvas, make sure that the vignette shape will fit on your photo, generally leaving that selected. And this last control for the crosshairs lets you position the vignette so you can see I can move it around. So those are all the controls. The controls are very straightforward. They're very standard types of things we see with vignettes. Well, how do I use them? What's the, what's the workflow that I'm doing a vignette for? I'm gonna show you that right here. So let's reset this. The very first thing I'm doing in here is I'm taking brightness down and I take my feather all the way to zero. Why? So I can see the vignette. And that's important for a few reasons. You know, one is if you want to do something where all I want to do is darken the corners. Well, now I can increase that size out there and say, all right, now I'm just going to affect this area here because when I increase feather, notice that it will bleed out or bleed out, blend out in both directions, right? So if I just want to do a subtle darkening on the corners and then finally adjust brightness to taste, I can work visually. Uh, that's also important. Let's get that brightness down. Let's get that feather down again, bring that size in. That's also important if you want to change the shape. Like if I want to just like kind of, you know, this, this funny little uh, binoculars thing here that just reminds me of a person you know, with their, their hands and their ears, you know, saying neener, neener at you. Uh, we can make the roundness of this here smaller. And if I want to get really tight, then with this position slider or uh, control, I can drag this around. See, I want this right over this, uh, this little uh, now alien looking kind of creature here. Once again, I'm now back to, I can take my feather, I can change that brightness, or maybe I need to increase that size a little bit. But now I can work visually and get a very soft, subtle vignette before and after, but it's drawing me right in to, uh, to these eyes here. Now, one slider you may have noticed is highlights, and that tends to be grayed out in many cases. That is related to the type. If we use priority, you'll notice highlights becomes active. And um, maybe the best way for me to illustrate this is to increase this vignette even more because what what the highlight slider will do is for the areas that are covered in the vignette you can add more highlights so they don't get completely crushed and, and covered by the vignette and that can be important depending on the photo you have so uh, let's do this let's get that feather that brightness way down so we can see what we're working on here all right so we are covering a lot of this area with this vignette all right so we'll take the brightness up somewhat I'll leave the feather where it is. Now let's play with highlights. And notice, for example, on the side of the, this binoculars thing, those highlights are being brightened. They're in the vignetted area, and highlights let you protect those highlights. They won't get as dark. So you've got a priority for the highlights there. If I switch to a different blend mode, normal, subtle, soft, you can see these are is a pretty garish because of how dark I have this vignette. I can't change highlights. As soon as I go to priority, 
then I have that option. So if you have a scene where you need to protect the highlights in the vignetted area, you wanna look at the priority blend mode. Most often, I'm still sticking with things like normal and I'll fade things out, increase my size a little bit, and just make things look a little more, more subtle with the general vignette action there. But that is everything about the vignette tool. There are a bunch of styles built in. I tend to just go dive in, take the brightness down, take the feather down, work visually, focus on where I want that vignette center to be. It's great for off-center subjects, which we do in our photography all the time, right? Rules of thirds and things. Use those crosshairs, move that little spotlight on what you really want your viewer to look at, and then feather it out, change the brightness, and just shape that final vignette. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.